thoughts within, dear Lord, for here is where you dwell, in your kingdom nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace, harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth, there is one, the all in all, the truth that makes me free to be, I heed its every call. and joy that his spirit expressed I find his me dear God and make manifest I turn within dear Lord for there you dwell in my heart of hearts where all is well the love the peace and joy that his spirit expressed I find his me dear God and make manifest I turn within dear Lord for there you dwell in my heart of hearts where all is well the love, the peace and joy that his spirit expressed my heart of hearts I know that all is well and it is well and wonderful on this beautiful Tuesday evening as we welcome each and every one of you to Lifeline. This is a Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. I am Sandra Cooper and I will be your moderator. This, this is going to be a really really special evening because we have two special guests and we're going to talk about the the spiritual power of music. But before we go into our, our discussion, I'd like to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to do our opening affirmative prayer. Beloved. Thank you, Sandy, and good evening, worldwide spiritual family. It is a joy to add my own words of welcome to Lifeline and to just ask you to join me as we begin as all things begin and end with God. Know with me now that the music, the music of the spheres, the music of all nature, the music of all life is God's music. And it finds its perfect expression in the soundtrack of our lives. Mm. It exposes us to the highest and the best in human nature and inspires us to allow that music, that universal harmony to link with every other sentient being upon the face of the planet, making us one, one with God, one with the melody of life, one with all that is. And so I know for our presenters this evening and for all those who join us on this lifeline, broadcast that we are lifted up to the very highest octave of love and feel the beauty because music is the shorthand of the emotions and we allow it now to just take us where it will to touch to heal to bless to prosper to love and liberate everyone whom it touches this evening to the honor and glory of God and I give thanks that this is truly so and yes, so it is, it is. Thank you, Reverend John. Mm -hmm. And for the next hour that we, we call one of connectivity, liberty, love and laughter, I invite you to just tune in to us to put your questions, 
um, on the Facebook uh, message and we will field the questions to our guests. So I'm going to just jump right in because we have not one guest this evening, but two, two amazing gentlemen that have been um, partners on, on my own life's path. And um, how, how, how do I introduce them? Um, quickly. <laughs> Very quickly. So since you are the first person that spoke first, our first guest, um, he started his career in the early 80s as a member of the group Home T4. He has built a mm. very outstanding career as a producer, a prolific songwriter and sought after vocal arranger with a very unique R&B reggae song that puts him in great demand by local and international artists. His obsession with the highest quality work provides a powerful attraction that facilitates the creme de la creme of local and international musical genius. Wow. Ah, some of his accomplishments. <laughs> You know, when the reggae boys went to France, there was a fabulous song out there called Rise Up. He was the writer of that one. This is 1998. He's a writer and producer of Find the Flag in Your Heart for Jamaica's 50th anniversary celebration. Mm -hmm. He's initiator of a town, call, town hall discussion session, bringing together community leaders, ministers of government and experts in various fields. And it was called Sweetly Reasoning with seasoning. Yeah. Um, he did a songwriter's boot camp and has done so for over 10 years and currently has over 45 young people being groomed to find a place in Jamaican music industry. He's one of the founding members, um, founding directors of the Calabash Musical Festival and recipient of the 2017 Jamaica Reggae Industry Association Award for Mentorship and recently appointed director of culture for the Fiwi Jamaica project at UTEC. Today, he remains as timeless and relevant as ever, as he continues to be a role model for young artists all over the globe. Wow. Oh. Wow, our next guest. <laughs> <laughs> Why, if you think you could get any better than that? This guest has been a professional musician for well over 50 years. As a youngster, he studied guitar at the Noel Foster Davis School of Music and mm. clarinet, I had no idea, <laughs> on a full scholarship at the Jamaica School of Music. Since the late 60s, he has been playing guitar and percussion, singing, writing, arranging, and producing music with a score of local and international artists. Some of his accolades include rhythm guitarist with Fabulous Five, Cabaret performer with his childhood friend Ozzy D, working with reggae icons like Peter Tosh, I3, Ziggy Mali, and the Melody Makers. Guitar teacher at the Jamaica School of Music. And he has a, he's a published author of a book entitled Meet the Guitar, which now forms the basis of his guitar classes. He's co writer of international hit Girly Girly with <laughs> Sanji Davis and Ozzy D. He's a guitarist or has been a guitarist with the, the um, National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica, and currently a guitarist for Israel Vibration, the group with which he still currently tours. And it's lastly that I would, could never leave out that he has worked extensively with the First Lady of Jamaican Theatre, the Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley. He's an advocate for the rights of music creators and a founding member and former chairman of the Jamaica Association of Composers, Authors and Publishers, JCAP. Wow, I mean, there's just so much more. But guess what? If he goes missing, you will find him buried in a book. Yes. His favorite pastime. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you joining us online, please to open your hearts and your minds and welcome our guests this evening, Mikey Bennett and Steve Golding. Wow. Oh, I don't know. I mean, any of you can jump in first. The spiritual power of music. What does that say to you? You know, where does it touch your heart and why does music have a spiritual power? Mikey, you want to take that? No, Steve, I, I, I yield to the, to the elder. <laughs> I yield to the elder. Uh, <laughs> Well, I tell you, it is interesting. All right, thank you, Mikey. You know, I, I remember this, right? Um, 
One of the epigraphs from today's reading from the Science of Mind magazine has a word that I love, the word salutary. Ernest Holmes says that in everything give thanks. An attitude of gratitude is most salutary and bespeaks the realization that we are now in heaven. And it is, you know, as you know, I never tire of noting the synchronous events because the opening line of what I had written actually says music is salutary. Mm. I like the word salutary. And so I decided to look at the, def the dictionary definition for salutary. And it means favorable to or promoting health, helpful, promoting or conducive to some beneficial purpose, something that is wholesome. You know, and so when we speak about the music in this way, um, Holmes has references to the music of the spheres. And I want to point out that today is actually the anniversary of my first spiritual mind healing service. Exactly wow. one year ago, yesterday, on um, Inside wow. the Space, you know, my mm. first chat in a long time. And that has a, as a, um, last year, on the 24th of November, I had occasion to say the music of the spheres can only be ear heard by ears of the hearts ears wow. of love and we can all tune in. So from that perspective, you know, I think about two young men that I know, one not so young anymore that um, I was speaking to recently. And one of them actually said that he's a pro young producer in Jamaica. Um, he gets a good feeling because people tell him that his songs are lifting. Mm -hmm. They promote a feeling of being lifted up. And this other friend, you know, before I hand off to Mikey, um, I actually had the privilege of, privilege of producing this song at Mikey's studio, a song called Achieve It. Now, here's the thing about this song. This young man is a inner city youth, you know, and but for music up to today, he said to me, it's a G, you don't know how the music keep me grounded. Mm. It wasn't for music, you know, who knows? You know, the inner city run-ins go. Picture an inner city youth all the way in France giving a teacher trouble. And this song done in Mikey Bennett's studio, written by this person that I'm talking about, is called Achieve It. And he was a little bit sad that the song didn't do as well as he thought it would have. And one day he got an email from this person who thanked him for this song because this particular inner city youth in her class, this was the only thing that brought him to attention. You know, and so those types of stories, I mean, I have a whole list, but you know, I don't want to take up the whole time, but you know, those types of things are what point out to me the healing and the spiritual power. Mm -hmm. That would be my opening salvo. Wonderful, oh. wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, when the lockdown started mm -hmm. and you know, I had a group of people, I still have them, and we decided to walk. I live up in Stillwell and there's a nice walking route. And one of the things we noticed was the birds and the mm -hmm. insects mm -hmm. and the things. And if you listen carefully, you would, hear, mm. you would hear all sorts of melodies. It's kind of similar to one we're hearing right now at someone's house, you know, with the, the, the various yes. insects carrying on. Yes. And we've heard the prayers going on, I'm saying. So, and what it did, what, what I think music does for us is that it reminds us of things that we, that we either missed or things that we long for. It, 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 it connects us with, it almost connects us with eternity then. Because mm. it's, a, it's a connection to, to an emotion that you had. When I do my songwriting boot camps, one of the things that, and I, for, the rest, for the rest of my thing, I want to consider my, my um, offerings as we're looking at emotional flashpoints. Because I think that is what music does for us the most thing. It creates some emotional flashpoints that, that's, that stay with us forever. Um, I often listen back to some of the music that we, Love the music of the 60s in Jamaica, 50s, 60s in Jamaica. And as, and as a now producer in this digital world, when you listen back, you realize that the music wasn't very, sonically, it wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. But just to hear, just to hear that scratch and that, when that, when that needle hit that turn, that turntable, hit that record, 
it brings back this emotion. It, it reminds us of a time. It reminds us of a good time. It reminds us of a girlfriend. It reminds us of a, a heartbreak. It reminds Your us first of a dance. It reminds yes. us of nobody. <laughs> so it connects us with eternity then. And mm -hmm. when you realize that what, what, what these birds, these, these, this, these music, the songs that these birds sing, the, 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 the cacophony of this, all of these songs, <laughs> is something that our grand, our four parents have heard. This is something that humans have heard forever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, we have this connection through these, through these insects who just, just being, they're, they're just being, they're not trying to, they're just be, girl, birds just sing because they can, I mean, and those of us who go into music, um, as a living, as a you know, a commercial thing. I think sometimes we lose something in the fact that it it is it is a gift to us and it's a gift to everybody. And some of us are gifted in making this gift a little more presentable. Mm -hmm. And the joy, I think Bob Marley make a thing. So boy, if, if if money come from my music, it's fine, but I never go into it to make money. Mm -hmm. And I think I can speak for me and Steve. We never went to this music for my money. I mean, when I realized that we could make money from music, I was the most surprised person in the world. And thankfully, with people like Steve around me, guiding me, it has never been that, that important part of the thing. It has, you know, I love paying people. I love, I, mean, I love being in a position to say to somebody, come to a music, Let, let's do a session. And Steve would ask, are we getting paid? I said, yeah, we're going to get paid this time. So it is that kind of, <laughs> you, you find your kindred, your group, based on the fact that there's something that binds us beyond the business of music. It is the, the emotional flashpoints that it creates in our lives. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Somebody said that music is the shorthand of emotion. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Yeah, that, man. you know, it just takes you right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it you is know, right there. So. I, I, I listen to Cool FM, Anna. Sunday evening most. Whoa, you alone? I, 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 I can't be, I mean, that's a free ad for Cool FM. But Trust I me. can't begin to tell you the level of emotional um, upsturment that takes yeah, place yeah. when mm -hmm. certain songs mm -hmm. play. And I remember where I was, what I was doing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And the same yep. emotional reaction to that happened 40 years ago is the same feeling I'm feeling in my kitchen as I'm cooking my rice and peas. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I might go back and I might, it, it may allow me to do some healing around what occurred around that song. Mm -hmm. Or the, the mm -hmm. learning that took place around that song. Or, or maybe that time, um, what Very happened important. and how it has contributed to my, my current um, life situation. situation. Mm -hmm. It is so funny you should say that, Sandy, because one of the things that, um, that um, came to me while I was, you know, preparing, and I deliberately, um, I took up before, to call Mikey so many times and I said no you know I don't want <laughs> us to rehearse this thing but I have I do I did write something and it, one of the things about when we speak about spiritual music or healing music my my mind goes to that those easy strains when you're meditating and when you're praying and then I say no not necessarily so you know because as you just mentioned you know the songs on a Sunday afternoon. And recently, this group out of England called, um, I'll tell you the name, in a second group called um, Tonic, Tonic um, Music for Mental Health. Mm. Did one of those same songs that Mike referred to, did over one of those same songs, Sweet Sensation, that video been making the rounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, song yeah. is one of my yeah. favorite songs from the Melodians, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And we had the privilege of doing it at Mikey's studio again when Harold was doing his album. And there's just something very simple, very straightforward. Ting tum, ting tum, ting tum, ting tum, ting tum, ting tum, and you are in. You are in. Yes. And when I saw those people um, doing that song, I said, "Wow!" And then they have actually published something that they do this work using music. You know, the work that they do in the community using music, and. Um, <clears throat> The whole idea is promote um, to challenge the stigma associated, you know, with things like mental illness and all of that. So, mm -hmm. Jamaican music aside, yes, because I'm sure ours is not the only music that has this effect. But the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is that, that again, come back to my words, salutary. You know, there is just that feeling of well-being 
you know, that comes out of just hearing that song. And, and, you, and like you say, you go back to that time, right? Um, Jim Lockhart said, um, when you ask him at the end of the last... Um, Lifeline. Last Lifeline, um, when you ask him about music because his wife is a classical violinist. Mm -hmm. And he actually said, not verbatim, more than the spoken word, music is an access point to the heart connection. Wow. You know? I think that's that's a very profound statement. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I made note of it as he said it, you know? I made note of it as he said it. You know, <clears throat> As you talk about that music connects us with eternity, you know, Mike, you know, music, um, and forgive because I'm not the technical musician in the, in the room, but there are se seven notes, right? Twelve in um, all. Am I right, Stevie? Twelve. No. Western, music, Western music is twelve, but I mean, I'll come back to that. All right. So, so twelve is important for me today. Twelve months ago and twelve years ago, I wrote an article, but just about music, but okay. Sorry. But, but I think the point I'm making is that there are just these few um, main notes, right? And and musicians over over the centuries have <laughs> taken those few notes <laughs> and have made symphonies and and I mean there are arrangements that you. are in. I have finite. to interrupt you. Tell I me. have to interrupt you. <clears throat> 12 years ago, I wrote this article. Music as we know it, this is a part of it. Music as we know it is represented by 12 notes. Well, Western music as we practice here. Yet the variety of melodies, melodies that have been produced and continue to, to be produced speaks volumes for the creativity of man, but also it speaks to the infinite nature of that from which all things come. Mm. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. 12 years ago, and you used almost, almost verbatim, you just said this. But then it, that, that is the eternity we're talking about. And ah. that's, that's what is, that we are all um, woven into that, that infinite tapestry of life. And that and music is just perhaps the needle and the thread that allows us to weave the different um, you know, figures and so on in, the, in there. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. So, wow, I'm getting ghost bumps. <laughs> Even more fantastic than those Not 12 bumps. notes, though, before I, before I shut up and make my guitar. Even more fantastic than those 12 notes mm -hmm. is what is called the pentatonic scale, ah. which, is, which is five notes. When exactly. um, Wintley Phipps, Phipps does um, Amazing Grace, mm. quite often he incorporates the story of its West African origin. Yep. Right now, the way our heritage has been returned to us via slavery, that amazing grace song stands tall amongst Christian hymns. Yes. So, dear, I suggest that what we are feeling, right, and this was written, you never believe this, this was written about a month ago, is that ancestral call more through the melody than through the words, right? Absolutely. Right, and so even with all that wretchedness aside, listen mm. to this particular verse of Amazing Grace. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining, bright shining as the sun, like the sun, I pray, right, I see, all right, sorry, I digress. Um, when we've been <laughs> there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we'll have no less days to sing God's praise than when we had first begun. And you just spoke about eternality. Now, if this isn't spirit having a good time with us, imagine this, right? A converted slave trader, much like Saul to Paul in the New Testament, the persecutor being used by spirit through a melody taken from the persecuted mm -hmm. to continue the matter of the healing spiritual power of music. I mean, irony of ironies, you know, even fewer notes than the 12. Yes. Five. <laughs> yeah. Five. Yeah. I have a personal question for you and Mackie, if I may. And it, it has to do with something Ernest Holmes said about mystics creating the great, the great art of the universe. And the question I have for you, Stevie, and for Mackie is, 
um, do you see yourselves as mystics? <laughs> when the creative process um, kicks in for you, and you're and you are you, you are connecting with 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 the you know, um, Lao Lao Tzu said that music in the soul can be heard by the universe. When you are in that zone, are you are you a mystic? Are you, is it a mystic experience for you? How how do you view it? It is. Um, one of the things you never get, I never get tired of is <laughs> going into a creative space with some people that you tr trust musically and trust, you know, mm -hmm. spiritually. And just, 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 just opening up yourselves to this mm. chance to be, to be a transmitter yes. to, to bring it forward. And then there's, there, there's that moment in the thing when, 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 and it might come from anybody, you know, from playing any instrument. There is, there's a spark that is lit. Mm -hmm. And it people keep adding to it, and then there's a moment, and they realize that this this is something special. And those of us who have various contributions will, you know, read. and then every now and then I get the feeling that, hmm, you know, you're going home or the next day you're playing this song, and I realize that if the session had been on another day, at another hour, it would have been a totally yeah. different, different song, mm -hmm. different song, different thing. Mm -hmm. So you realize that we were just blessed to have been there at this particular time. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm doing the lyrics, every now and then there is a, there's a, there's a, I, I, I experience a situation where it's almost as if there's a wind blowing through, straight through my ears. And Steve will tell you, there's a little part of the studio that I just walk to in a little corner. And the people who know me after a while say, so yes, wait, so leave, him, so. leave him alone. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to trust that. that low him, low him. Don't, don't come, don't worry about it. The right thing will come at the right time, mm -hmm. and and that's why I'm saying those of us who, who when you're doing it, when you're doing it for because of a deadline or a job and thing, sometimes you lose out on this. But when you're just going and say, "Listen, here is a vibe," we, we, we just going be, be true to the the, the inspiration. The I inspiration. think that's the point. Mm -hmm. Being mm -hmm. true to the inspiration that coming from a place mm -hmm. that you trust, mm -hmm. and you know, and like I said, the, the more aligned you are with your with your best self. And you know the, the, the and your trust and you you in in you know, environment that that is safe kind of environment to this kind of truth. Um, but I'm getting goosebumps just from, just just remembering these situations. And if it happens to you once a month, it's fine. But when it it, it it lasts for a long time, and everybody who is a part of that session get touched. And I'm I can I'm driving home and I know I can get a phone call. Somebody call and say, yo, that session are real special now. Send me, send, send me the finished product, that kind of thing. And you know that, okay, it might never even get played on the radar, but here is a thing that all of us were. You created together. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was a gift passing through us. And we were, we were blessed to be able to be the transmitters of this. But you wow. know, what comes to mind to you know, Mikey, there's a this this the um the metaphor of the sender and the receiver mm. as, as mystics um, and i don't see the mystic as as, as any, anything driven by ego it is just what it is we are all mystics right mm. it's just to the, 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 you know to know that i when i once i empty my my vessel of the clutter and should and shouldn't and how it look how it sound or what will people think if once i get rid of that and I just said, just I'm open. Then the sender with the, that divine presence will speak. It's it's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mike is a and, and, oh, this, this is a goosebump session, you know. Love no, no, it is, it is, it is right as, now. As, okay. When Mike is a um, transmitter, I was about to say transceiver. Because, yes. you know, because, yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 the heart space that is open is at once the source of the inspiration and the receptacle, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's working both ways. And that just now when you heard that um, beginning for Hallelujah, it was not an error. <laughs> it, was, it was done deliberately because this song that we have done, that you wrote the lyrics for, Sandy, that was done for the temple, came about in much the same way came about in much the same way as Mikey is describing, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing.
But you see, the, the, the creative process works the same way, I think, no matter what medium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there is an ecstasy and it, it may come in, in, in physical intimacy with someone. It can come through music, through dance, through, through looking at a beautiful painting or a picture at a beautiful person. Um, mm. the, for me, the, the, the process is the same, uh, just using different media. But you yeah. the other thing about music though, you the thing about music, three stories. One came from you, Reverend John, several years ago, and two that been making the rounds on, um, on, you know, in social media in recent times of this, um, these dementia patients, mm -hmm. right? An old ballerina and this old R&B singer. Yes, yes. And that's why the point that Mikey makes about um, the music is the music genre is not, an, is not important, right? The old ballerina in her wheelchair. Yes, yes. When they started, when they started playing Swan Lake, I started to move. She assumed yes. the position. She assumed the position, and but for her legs, she did everything. And Absolutely. the R&B singer, the R&B singer, when they played his old songs, and he started singing along, the nurses at the place actually called the doctors and say. What's going on here? And I brought a recording device into his room and that formed a part of his treatment thereafter. And his healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the part um, and the other story that Reverend John told us many years ago about this three-year-old boy who would sing to his unborn sister while she was in the womb. Yep. Right. And this one actually made the news, I found out later on. But um all kind of complications at birth. And so the parents making arrangements now for last rites, you know, because she's not going to live, you know. She wasn't stillborn or anything, but she was she's not going to live. She's not going to survive. And he insisted that they allow him to sing for her. And she was home in weeks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Home in weeks, you know. So yeah. the reason why I guess us musicians and us practitioners in the business, and it's not exclusive to us, right? But the reason why we make a big deal about music is, as 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 Jim Lockhart says, an instant connection. Yes, yes, yes. Heart yes. I believe that. I believe that. You yes. know, Steve, as you talked about the ballerina in the chair, I, my own personal experience, you know, with my mom, but with, with dementia, where you know I would go and visit her, and she would sit, body heavy, in in the chair with her head lulled to one side. Um, you know, hi, mom, nothing. How are you doing, mommy? Nothing. And then my cell phone rang. And all of a sudden I got. Mm. Mm. <laughs> sound, man. sound. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. dancing to the cell phone. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so um, we don't know how deeply music goes to the, to the heart because music is of God. Music is God and it's God to God through God as God. I can't see mm -hmm. it any other way. Mm. You know, you know, Henry David Thoreau, the um, essayist, American essayist, poet, philosopher, and transcendentalist. Um, I, I want to just quote him. He said, when I hear music, I fear no danger. I am mm. invulnerable. I see no foe. I am related to the earliest of times and to the latest. When the music, words, music just takes him to a space mm -hmm. where he's invincible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is that feeling. There is that, that feeling. feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a point of convergence. Music provides a point of convergence for all beliefs. Mm -hmm. Absence of lyrical content, which is what usually causes the furor. You know, the absence of um, lyrical content leaves the form pure. And no matter your socioeconomic, political, religious, you know, leaning, right? It now becomes an expression that can be understood by all and is available to all. Mm -hmm. That for me is, you know, uh, um, something. Somebody sent me just before that anniversary talk last year, someone sent me a thing called Why Music. I just share that now. Music is a science, music is mathematical, music is a foreign language, music is history, music is 
physical education, music develops insight and demands research. Music is all these things, but most of all, as Reverend John said, music is art, seven points, but here the eighth point, right, the octave. That is why we teach music, not because we expect you to major in music, not because we expect you to play or sing all your life, but so you will be human. Mm -hmm. So you will recognize beauty. So mm -hmm. you will be closer to an infinite beyond this world. So you will have something to cling to. So you will have more love, more compassion, more gentleness, more good. In short, oh. more life. Oh. Wow. Who is that mm -hmm. man? I don't know. It's one of those unknown. As as um as Winkley Phipps said, he'd like to meet that person called unknown when he gets to him. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the, 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 the piece is called, and yeah, it's called Why Music. Yes. Uh, yes. Wow. Wonderful. So Wonderful. we have some comments um in in in, in the chat. Um timeless and relevant. All of this is coming out, Andrean Bonner. Um, CV Golden puts the gold in gold standard. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen says, This is what it feels like to sit at the feet of masters. Thank you, Mike and Stevie. Blessings to the max. And there's Carl Bliss online as well. Thanks for this interesting discussion. Blessings. And you know, Carl is himself a, a most accomplished um, yeah. singer. Singer, yes, you know? yes, so, yes. Wonderful tenor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. Amazing. One of the humbling things about the whole, being mm -hmm. a part of the music thing, is trying to hone your craft mm -hmm. to be true to the inspiration coming. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. when you, I mean, anybody who see Reverend Gunn's sermon wonder where it came from. But I'm sure he, his whole life has prepared him for this particular part of his life here, his ability to perform in the is at this level. So the vocabulary and Steve is reading. When you talk to Steve, you can hear, you hear, you hear the result of all of the things that he has read. But it also, it also yeah, it, it, it allows us to, the, the more, like I tell my students all the while, the, the more, the bigger your vocabulary, the, the better able you'll be able to, to describe what you really feel. Everything can Absolutely. be nice and good. It's more than nice and good. It's extraordinary. It is, you know I mean? All of these things that can, that make you give goosebumps. Eh? Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the things that as, as musicians, the thing that we, we aim towards, I mean, I mean, for the past two years, I've been spending a lot more time working on my guitar playing. And it is to be able to represent the, the flash, emotional flashpoints that I want to bring up mm. there a little more. Um, and make me appreciate even more. The, I mean, every now and then Steve might send me something or send me something to, or the other way around. Something that maybe a song that we knew long ago, but it, you just, you're at the point now where, well, like I've said, the, the master, the student read it now. So, this mm -hmm. song that I've heard all my life, all of a sudden it means something to yes. me. The melody means something more because I'm ready for it. I'm ready for this. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it says something about the, even the, our appreciation of various artists and various genres of music. Like Stanley and the Turbine could not be described as a classic R&B singer. But Stanley and the Turbine, Stanley, song. Stanley yeah. did something to our soul that was yeah. real, real. It yeah. was coming from a place that some of us never, I mean, we were too boasted to accept. It was a mental thing, but it was really mm -hmm. awesome. And mm -hmm. it took me a while. It's almost like you have to go make the circle and come back and realize, hmm, we were young and we, you know, we were fascinated by the r and world and you wanted to, you know, when, when the radio man described you as the, you know, the, the Jamaican temptation, you felt really good. But Stanley and the Turbine was probably a little closer to to, to real, to, to, to the, our Jamaicanness and our Africanness and mm -hmm. than, than temptations were. Yes. So it so when you get to the point now where you you, you appreciate it's like you're going to it's like you're going to a, you, you spend a weekend in, in Antigua Bay at a fancy hotel and you pass back and you stop at Fate Spend and you get a piece of roast yam and a selfish and you realize hmm I, this this cost five hundred dollars and I just spent ten thousand dollars on this on this meal and this kind of could make 
this this meant so much more to me. Yeah. So, the, so it's all of these experiences that we have that we, when we get to a point where we, we are true to them, mm-hmm. how we really, really feel, how it really makes us feel, mm-hmm. and you know, the acceptance. Mm-hmm. So as artists and as those of us who, you know, art in various form, I mean, Sandy, I mean, I wish I could have write like Sandy, but Sandy's been working on her writing for over the years to be able to say, to get her. At, at, from she came to your class. <laughs> from she came to your class. Well, 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 you know what I mean? Sometimes, and I was going to say to you, Mac, if you want a good guitar teacher, I can, I can recommend one to you, you know. Uh-huh. No, no, no. Oh, of course, I'd love that. I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have a great one in, 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 in the group here, too. But yeah. no, but what I'm saying is just that mm-hmm. sometimes, as you met, sometimes uh, we take ourselves. You know, I'm going past that long time. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we'll take sometimes we just take ourselves too seriously and mm. forget you know, the, the, the simplicity of the beauty yes, and the simplicity yes, of what we yes. do. Yes. Um there's a, a question in the chat from um um Sonia, Dr. Sonia. Um and she asks, I mean, have you two always been drawn to music or um was there a pivotal moment? I mean, I said Stevie, you were from 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 school days. From in your teens, and and I didn't know Long that you played that. clarinet. Long and Mike, that. Mike, your your bias said you started with home T four. I don't believe that. Long no, I did. That. I did. I started before long, long before that. I mean, I was an advent and you know the, the music, the music. So tell us a little bit experience. about the beginning. What really was, you know, the seeds are the seeds are always there in all of us. But what what do you think nurtured um, that seed for you, Mikey? And then Stevie, you um, can church. I grew up in Adventist church, and mm-hmm. the, one of the Adventist custom is that every <laughs> evening there was worship, mm-hmm. and we were encouraged to we were encouraged to you know to perform at church and have you know farm groups. So I was a member of a couple um, you know vocal groups and you know Adventist into harmony. So we were very, I mean, fine. We were listening to the some some foreign people doing a lot of things, and <laughs> and that we patterned our things off these things. And later on, but my and then when I went to Kiss, you know, I became a giant choir. So I've always been interested in the music. And then the 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 what you call it? No, the soundtrack to our lives was the music of the sixties. You know, the, the very popular music. So mm-hmm. I never thought of being taking up music professionally until I went into a studio, and that bug bit me when I realized that wow. we went with, without something and came out with something that you could play. That was like, mm-hmm. wow, yes, this is this is it. Mm-hmm. This is it, you know. It's like I guess I guess like just like a, like also the, the other thing, like farming. And one of the excitements is, is when you see that that seed that you planted a couple of years ago started to it grow, is. and you realize, wow! And you know, it's it, it, very personal. You know, I do, you know follow the instructions, and you till one till the day that you're able to eat that thing that you planted is a is a wow. wonderful experience. So mm-hmm. that was my thing. Awesome. Thanks, Mikey. And, and Steve, what about you? Um, not necessarily church, but church was involved, but Anglican church, not necessarily. But I tell you this, there were some persons who worked with my mom when we were children, right? I mean, you mentioned Miss Lou. I mean, people don't begin to understand the love I have for Miss Lou, but we can get to that later if time allows. But as a child, right? Um, my dad always had an old Hawaiian guitar on top of the wardrobe in his bedroom. Of course, the string is set for slide playing, but we don't know that. So we'll try to play it. And of course, the fingers couldn't deal with it because the distance from the fretboard to the string was so wide. Took the guitar to music, Mart, and take out the little thing that was raising the string, <laughs> and voila. But we used to go with um, these persons who would work with my mom. There, there was a poker church right at the corner a revival church, call it what you will. I don't remember the exact terminology. So all you religion um, experts, please don't kill me for this. But that guitar rhythm, right? This is after the drumming. This is after the drumming. The drumming for me is Rastafari drumming, which came later. So I didn't know the revival drumming in church, right? This church had a brother playing guitar. Don't ask me what he was doing. He wasn't playing any melody. He was just playing card. And you see that um king in the king in the king in it. When you see that church start to rock, yeah, man. yeah, man. You yeah say, man. no, sir, me won't be able to do that. 
you want to be able to do that. So fast forward to Fab Five and all the rest of it. But um, there was there was always that interest. I remember at primary school, I can't remember Miss Vassell's first name. But Miss Vassell, when you're giving trouble, Miss Vassell not going to send you to Miss Rod for punishment and all of that. You remember Miss Ethelyn Rod? My goodness. Ethelyn Rod was the was the headmistress. But yes, Miss Vassell was in charge. Miss Vassell was in charge of music. The punishment was you boys come up here. And she would sit you down in this in her classroom, which had a piano in it. <laughs> and she would play, she would play everything. So the music was just always there. So mm -hmm. always wow. There. You know, th there is another um an interesting um thing from Reverend Sonia, and I and I really want to um ask a question about it as well. Let me tell you what she says, and then I can add to that. Would you say something about rhythm and the soul? I find that my body cannot stand still in the presence of a strong one, and that is the rhythm. And I and I, read, I <laughs> endorse that because I declare and claim that I don't like dance hall music. But I'm at my sink washing dishes, and there is some rhythm coming from the community that is near to me, and I find myself doing that. And I'm moving, and it's almost like I, I can't stop. Tell us a little bit about this rhythm and soul. What's the connection? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Mm. That drum beat doesn't go away. Mm. Oh, I, I spoke about I spoke about that um, ancestral thing with the pentatonic scale. Mm -hmm. You can talk about DNA. You can talk about slavery. You can talk about our story. You can talk about anything you want. There is something that doesn't go away. And that's why I made the point about lyrical content. Dance hall music, not the lyrics. Dance hall music, I think it is um, Antoinette that has says it and said it, and several persons who are taking the time to do the research. Mikey will elaborate, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Dance hall music, Slide Down Bar has said it, is closer to the original things that we retain from Africa. A lot of those rhythms are closer to that African beat. Beat that African. I don't want because Africa is a continent, you know. I really don't want to get into that, but because specific countries elude me right now, you can't lose that. Mm -hmm. That funde, that funde yes. in the Rastafari yes. rhythm. I was just about Ooh. to play prayer right, but I won't. That funde in the um, in the Rasta rhythm really is very, very, very much like the heartbeat, you know. Mm -hmm. It's really Ooh. very much like the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So it's as okay. if you're resisting your heartbeat if you try not to respond to what you're hearing. I guess That's that. Thank you for that. Thank I you want for to that. share something. I have to share something with you all. When I was about 14, there was a, an American woman who became a, a voodoo. Um, high priestess in Haiti, I suppose, and she taught um, Haitian dance. Her name was Lavinia Williams. Mm. Mm. Yes, I, went, I did her classes. I did her class, and the first class I did with her at the oh. at, at, at UWE, mm -hmm. we had to cross the floor and reverence the drummer. The drummer was her daughter, a girl mm -hmm. called Tiabro. Remember mm -hmm. it like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is ridiculous. Why am I bowing to this woman and this drum? And Lavinia said, because you bow because you need to honor the rhythm that is in you. And she said, everybody has a rhythm, mm -hmm. a unique rhythm, unique to them, to their, to their being. And I thought to myself, yeah, you know, yeah, right. And she mm -hmm. said, T, play his rhythm, pointing at me. And she began to play this rhythm and I began to dance. And I tell you, I could not stop. I couldn't stop until she stopped. And I literally just collapsed in a, in a, in a in sweat and, I was actually frightened because yes. I, I couldn't mm -hmm. stop, although I wanted to. I that's, why that the drummers, that's why the Kumina drummers have the, the camp music and the serious yep. music and it, you know, because if they really, I remember one night at NDTC, um, some of my friends were visiting, were mm -hmm. visiting. And of course, you know, uh, we didn't end with Kumina that night, thank God. Um, but we ended with a drum, something with drums. And I tell you, the drummers were in that theater for a good 20 minutes to a half hour. 
after the show ended because those those persons, Black Americans, would not leave. They would not leave. Yes. Yeah, it hold them. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I, I, I felt, I've, I have felt the pull of, of possession or, or of transcend, transcend, transcension, transcendental experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to drums at the School of Dance. And mm -hmm. when you have like eight or 10 drummers going, mm -hmm. and it's a rhythm that just pulls. It just pulls you, know, you in. But uh, um, with, 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 oh gosh, you know, this is a two hour session, you know, Reverend John. I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> we have about um, 10 more minutes, but you know, um, I was personally fascinated by the um, collaboration that occurred between um, Steve and, and yourself, Mikey and myself on the song we did for the temple. And, you know, I just wanted to speak a little bit to you know, what happens when, when musicians come together? Um, you, you, you've talked about the, the experience in the studio when you kind of go into the, into the corner and that is a space where you feel that inspiration and, and you create and produce. Um, but what happens when it's, a, it's more of a collaborative effort and then there's like almost a one, the, sense, the experience of oneness occurs so that the one song comes out of, this one entity called us. How does that work? You just described it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Exactly. I That's exactly what it is. Everybody playing to the strength. And um, in other words, and I tell Stevie all the well, way, I've heard young musicians say, boy, this, 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 this song want a Steve Golden guitar. And I know exactly what I mean. You know? I mean, there are as Steve Rich said, are, these musicians are better than him. But Steve Golden brings something to that situation. Mm -hmm. But is it acknowledging the fact that there is what this what this particular composition requires is something that I know this other person will bring to the table. So there's this honesty that yes, um, yeah. But um, and it's, it's an opportunity to, to to like I say, we have been studying, we have been preparing ourselves for the very moments when we are called upon you know to give up to give up ourselves and that is what true musicianship is like wow. you know the thing stevie can you play that a, a, a little bit of that song i will that i will i will mikey Andy. stopped himself short because he was about to say one of the names you know other than the jamaican temptations are the jamaican this are the jamaican that <clears throat> him stopped himself short of saying <laughs> jamaican quincy jones because that is himself and that skill, that knack, that ability to know which musician will bring mm -hmm. that thing to the, the session mm -hmm. is also yeah. very important. And Quincy Jones is the master for that. It is the master. We are the world. We yeah, are the world. Yeah, you just to Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson, write the words for this song. Write this song. Him just tell them, say, write this song. I mean, look how many songwriters Quincy Jones know. Exactly. You know, but he just told those two to write this song. Mm -hmm. Here we stand this song. Yeah. Well, hold on a second, CV, before you play. Uh, no, all right, hold on a little bit. Reverend Sheila was asking um to, uh, who said, sorry, Reverend Sheila McKeithan, who who said the drums of Africa beat in my heart? Is there is that a quote that you're familiar with? I know the quote, I don't know who said it. Okay, you know, all right, we can we'll, we'll find out. We have okay. to find that out. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of our um, Reverend Sonia, somebody might know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We'll find that out. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, in my heart there is a song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, as I walk each day along. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hear God's vibrant harmony. And the rhythm it is sending of new glories yet to be. Uh, Mary, Mary McLeod Bethune, the drums of Africa still beat in my heart. They will not let me rest while there is a single Negro boy or girl without a chance to prove his worth. Whoa. 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 God bumps. Give me the please write down the name. Mary McLeod Bethune. Mary Bethune, I've heard the name. Mary Bethune. Yeah. Thank you for that, Reverend Sheila. Wonderful. Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. You know, someone is asking if this song can be released. Well, the persons who own the song are right here. So it has to it has to be voiced by somebody other than Steve. Oh man. I mean, I've thought of that, you know. I've thought of that um, and um, I would have no clue, but then I have a master producer exactly. um, in, the, in the room here. So um, Mikey B, it's all over to, all, all over to you. Do what you Over-here. need. To yeah, There's well, a story that Mikey won't tell about this song. There's mm -hmm. a story that Mikey won't tell about this song. You see all those young people. On, on, on the about, back up. Mm. Oh, it's one people doing the back up. <laughs> Ah, yes. So you see all those young people that Mikey speak about, I will come back to that whole Quincy Jones um, persona, not the personality, Quincy Jones. Um, we, Sandy says she wanted to do this song. Obviously she called Stevie. So why don't I talk to Mikey? No, man, you talk to Mikey. Okay, I mean, it goes back and forth for a couple of weeks and things. All right. And the song happens. Mikey said, come up to the yard for lunch, which he does quite often. So we'll go up to the yard for lunch. In walks this young man that he's working with. Say, um, I'm going to finish putting on the guitar and voicing the song. I said, who going to voice the song? You going to voice the song, that is Stevie, right? Mm -hmm. The rhythm itself was created by Kurik, who has um, performed for us. Now, you know, I don't like calling names on Facebook, but I'm pretty sure these persons will mind. Right? who recreated the rhythm and Mikey says so. The people who do in the backup name, Sharita, <laughs> and Mikey says so. And I don't remember the young man's name, Mikey, um, who did Simon. the engineering. Um, sorry, go again. Simon. Simon did the engineering, right? Now that type of reputation, not many producers in this business can boast. Right, and that's why we went, I mean, I'm glad that we went to great pains, not pains really, but we, went, we took the time to acknowledge all those persons. So I just want to acknowledge them here now publicly. True, true, true. Boy, sparkle them, I'm telling you. Okay. It's, a, it's an point amazing point. work. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, we are at five, at what, 6.56, and we should be wrapping up now. I have one last comment from, um, um, Reverend Sonia, she says she wants to know if you have a hypothesis as to why people of every culture have responded in some way to some form of our music, including that of Noel Dexter. Now, there is, yeah, I'm, I'm not hearing it is Jamaican music. Why is yeah. it that our Jamaican music is so attractive and such a, so, so hypnotic and seductive to other cultures? There's a, there's a truth that um, while not biblical or based in the wisdom of the sages, nonetheless stands as a truth, you know? Um, show me a people with their own music. I think it's um, Lao Tzu's teacher, um, Confucius, who might have said it. You know, show me a people with their own music and I will show the makings of a great people. Ooh. There is a there is a genuineness, and I'm glad Mikey mentioned mentor because we're not denying the influence, the various influences. We're not denying all the various influences. 
But like I said, it's a convergence, mm -hmm. you know, and it happens so well in Jamaica. I don't know why. It happens so well in Jamaica. I mean, persons come to the island to record because of that vibe, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And so it is just what we are as a country and as a people, I think, you know, I don't know that there's any scientific name for it. Maybe there is, you know. We this have is called illustrious. energy. Mm. <laughs> you know, we have illustrious people, you know, listening in. So maybe they can advise us of the correct terminology. But Jamaica is that thing. Jamaica is that. Yeah, writers come here to write, uh, you know. Um, but that famous quote from Churchill, that play. famous quote from Churchill that is from, um, from what our boy name? Oh Lord, up to that idea I told a young man about it. A famous Winston Churchill quote that was written by um, Termina Sandy man, Michael Record will tell us. Jamaica, Claude is not, is not uh, Claude McKay, it's Claude McKay. I'm not sure, Reverend Michael will correct us. But yeah, so here it is, this world is quoting this great wartime leader and he's reading one of our books, one of our authors, mm -hmm. you know? Yep, wow. yep, wow. Wow. yep. Wow, well, we, you know. I, I'm going to use the words of, of Reverend Michael. You just called his name. He said, wonderful session. Thanks to all concerned, inspiring and informative deserves to be repeated. The powerful healing, spiritual power of music. Um, wow. Oh, uh, Amazing. Anna says it's Claude McKay. Oh, it is Claude, Claude McKay. McKay. Thank you, man. Yes, thank you, Andrea. Yeah, I thought so. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? Wow. What, what do I do? How do I wrap this up? You know, it, it, it has been an amazing hour. This has been more than liberty, love and laughter. We have really <laughs> <laughs> put it all together in a most extraordinary way. Um, I, I, I'll turn over to Reverend John in a little while. Um, but, you know, we are so, <laughs> we are so um, intent on making mu music be that which lights the path forward for us here at the Temple of Light. And so, you know, if you feel moved, um, you know, those of our friends who are watching to support our, our ministry, um, our music ministry particularly, you know, it just, you know, take a visit to our donate page on right on Facebook, donate.templeoflightcsl.org. There you're going to find three ways to donate, whether online in Jamaican dollars and US dollars, as well as via our um, um, doing a bank transfer and deposit. And we, we just want to thank you in advance, you know, for your kindness and generosity and for helping us at the Temple of Light be a beacon of light. So, wow, um, I, I have to zip it because I want Reverend John, to, I know he has so much he wants to tell you, Mikey and Steve. So Reverend John. Ah, uh, so much I want to tell you, but and yet still there are no <coughs> words to express how mm. grateful we are. Mackie and Steve, uh, you know, somebody said that music is the wine that fills the cup of silence. And <laughs> this evening, yes. I have been, I have been, as the British say, gobstopped in your presence. So this has been really profound. And um, it, it, is, it is really worth another, here's a, here's a shameless commercial, another hour at least with you both you have enriched us you have educated us you have you have shown us um the soundtrack of your lives to be music and to be your calling and i love mackie what you said that all of life has prepared you for this great great work that you are doing so to both of you i say don't come down you mm. know be like nehemiah i'm doing a great work and i cannot come down i cannot let go of this because it is why i came to earth to love, <laughs> to serve, and to remember, and to remember. the greatness of Don't our serve, people. Remember. Thank you both so much for enriching mm -hmm. us this evening. Well, thanks for having me, boy. I mean, um, special, really, really special, really mm -hmm. special. Special, special. Well, I'm going to eat your Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Don't <Yeah>. say <laughs> before, before, yeah, yeah. before we go, Reverend John, we have to, to <laughs> walk the same way we came in. Absolutely. With prayer. And I'm going to ask you, Stevie, to just um, do the closing affirmative prayer. Yes. 
Mikey, thanks to all of those of you who tuned in to us this evening for our Lifeline on Facebook and on, on here on Zoom. We love you, we bless you, and we thank you so much for being part of our journey. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Wonderful. Right. Namaste, everyone, and thank you, technical team. <laughs>